I dare say this is a first for you, Granny, to sample the joys of a registry office. Then you'd be quite wrong. No, in 1878, I attended the wedding of Lord Bracebury and Hannah Rothschild. It was held in the Board of Guardians, very much the same. Seems almost sad in a way. But in marrying a Rothschild, there are certain compensations. <laughs> is Lady Flincher all right? Cora, would you go and help Susan? Look, she seems in rather a queer way. There is something that you must know, and I feel most uncomfortable not having told you before now. You don't want any deathbed confession, Susan. Remember, this is not your day. I'm sorry, Aunt Violet, I think it's time. In fact, it's long overdue. What is? Uh, no, please. Don't... Shrimpy and I are in the process of getting a divorce. What? I'm afraid it is going to be all over the papers, and as things stand, it must involve you and your family. God, if... Thank you, Lady Flincher. Or may I call you Susan? We are forewarned, and so now we will be forearmed. You can't mean it. Father, just please, I beg you. If you do anything to stop this marriage, anything at all, I will leave you. And then you will have a scandal worthy of the name. I doubt you expected to take your beloved child through the portals of Caxton Hall Registry Office. There are lots of things in my life I never anticipated. But if you're sure, I'm sure. By the way, Atticus was blameless. I'm ashamed now that I wobbled. I know he was blameless. How can you know? Well, I do. Beyond a trace of doubt. Who did my enemy turn out to be? Never mind about that. You don't know him. Not properly. Then I don't want to know. I don't want to hate anyone today. You do realize this is my real wedding? Not the blessing this afternoon? This is where I've become his wife. And I hope you will be very, very happy. My dearest darling. I don't believe it. Is that it? Am I just expected to be a good loser? It's too late for that, my dear. Far too late. Please stand. Listen, everyone, as soon as they finish lunch, they'll get ready for the blessing at half past two. Those of you going to the Savoy Chapel, there'll be a coach to bring you back for the reception this afternoon. What's about dinner, Mr. Carson? And just the family. Her ladyship wants a buffet of what's left over. I might add some hot soup. I should go. I'm helping Lady Rose to change. I don't think it's right to put on a wedding dress when it's only a blessing. She won't wear a veil. You're right, though. We should get on. So we should be able to get away later on, if you're up for it. After her ladyship's gone to bed. What do you mean you want to come? Well, you've been having lots of fun, Miss Danker. Unless you feel the worse for wear. I don't know what you mean. I had a headache, that's all. Well, if he's coming, you needn't bother. No, we want Andy with us. With you for what? Nothing, Mrs Hughes. You should know Andy. You take your life in your hands if you throw in your lot with these two. <laughs> Please believe that I love your son very much. And w whatever I can do to make him happy, I will do. We know that, my dear. And we wish every blessing on your head. Well, well, the thing is done. Let us go forward in hope. There they are. We should say hello. Ah, look who's coming your way. Hello, Tony. How lovely to see you. And you, of course, Mabel. Welcome. Are we welcome? I hope so. You're as welcome here as I trust I will be at your wedding. 
Is it just me who's embarrassed? I'm not embarrassed. We're getting married in December, and we'd be delighted to see you both there. Oh, I'm so pleased. Truly. It'll be in London. Country weddings in the winter can be such muddy affairs. <laughs> I don't suppose we'll ever know who did it now. But who cares? It wasn't my father. Oh, I never thought it was. I mean, I know he's against me, but that sort of thing's not his style. You see, she already knows you better than he does. I'm not sure it's what she really wanted, her registry office in the Savoy Chapel, but I do think she'll be very happy. I agree, they're well matched. When are you going home? First thing. I can't wait. A call of young Marigold. You sound as if you don't approve. No, it's not that. Oh, look, it's Tony and Mary. They make a handsome couple. Give it up, Papa. It's a pipe dream. So, it turned out as you planned? You were just what I needed when I needed it. I hope you know that. Well, I know a lot of things. And one of them is not to mess with Lady Mary Crawley. But everything's come right. Mm, it has for me. I hope it does for you too. Good luck, Mary. Lord Cinderby has taken Brancaster Castle for the grass this year. In Northumberland? Yes, and we wondered if you might like to join us there. That's very kind. All of you. It would give us great pleasure. All of us? I wonder if you know what you're taking on. <laughs> I'll telephone Lady Grantham in a day or two and we'll talk dates. I look forward to it. That wasn't too hard, was it? Not hard for me, since I was allowed no say in the matter. None at all. <clears throat> he seems like a wonderful boy. Thank you, that's very kind. I've heard about your declaration at the registry office. All I want is your happiness, my darling. Whatever I said or did was done from love. I'm afraid we must have different definitions of the word. Hmm. How are you two bearing up? Well, thank you, Lady Danville. I do feel for you. It must be very trying, but I so admire you for putting on a good face. I wonder if you remember that my father was Jewish. Oh. I'm afraid I... Uh, that is, how interesting. <laughs> ah, Louise, I wasn't expecting to find you here. <laughs> Is everything all right, my lady? I thought I'd sneak away. I don't think I'll be missed. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I feel as if our household is breaking up, Carson. But I suppose that's what happens. People grow up and move away and things change. I hope Lord Gillingham hasn't upset you. Oh, no. He's happy with Miss Lane Fox and I'm happy for them. Because if I might be permitted to say so, he wasn't good enough for you, my lady. Not by half. I don't think anyone else would agree with you. But the difference is that you agree with me. I watched you realize it as time went on. Reluctantly, perhaps. But you came to see that he wasn't up to the mark. I'm not sure if that's alarming or reassuring, coming from someone who knows me so well. Reassuring, I hope. For I'm confident that you will triumph in the end. Thank you, Carson. That means more to me than you know. 